And it's my pleasure, and I ask you to give him a big mid-continent welcome to Dr. Ken Winters. for that warm welcome. Uh, I did, I, I probably ought to have a crutch or something or a cane when he identifies those multiple centuries of experience. Uh, so there's no reason to be saying about my youthfulness or my height or my black hair. I used to tell the story in the Senate, uh, which I just left a couple years, a year ago in fact, uh, and I, I chaired the Senate Education Committee and somebody would say, how's the work going up there? And I said, well, if you'll remember, eight years ago when I joined the Senate, I was six foot two and black headed. <laughs> Obviously, uh, something happened to me in that period of time, but uh, all of that was not truthful, so I'll have to admit that to you now. I I'm, I'm pleased to be with you today, uh, not under the circumstances that, I, that I'm here, but it's certainly a joy for me to to be with you and get to meet you. I did get to meet some of you on Saturday afternoon as I made my way over to the library to say thank you for those hardworking people that were spending the time uh, to try to get our next submission to the Department of Education completed, and I'll talk a little bit more about that too. So it, it's my joy to be a part of your convocation this morning. I know you, you may have had a, a dynamic uh, lecture plan, and, and I've kind of imposed upon you to get you to listen to me a little bit today, but I thought you might want to hear some of the things that will be said, and I hope uh, you, you will be as encouraged as, as I have been. I want you to know that it was only last week, seems like a long time ago now, that I was called by some people that representing this institution about uh, the uh, difficulties or, or the situation you find yourself in right now and they wanted me to come and, and, and listen to them and talk about it uh, a little bit so I did that I think about Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon and, and we haven't quit talking since and it's been a, a very busy week for us and some people deserve some major thank yous from, from a lot of us for what's been go uh, going on at that point. We have a situation here on, uh, at, at Mid-Continent, obviously, that is going to demand some major attention on our part over the next uh, a few weeks, and certainly uh, uh, that has not... If you remember, uh, most of you saw the news that, uh, that uh, Dr. Emhoff uh, uh, request to step down uh, from the position and me being appointed as a... a uh, to the uh, acting president role occurred at the board meeting on Saturday. And, and by the way, if you've ever thought about the work it would take to take an institution like you from 200 plus students to over 2,000 students in, 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 a, in a, a few years, that's a major accomplishment. And the M officer sitting up here, I think, in the crow's nest with us today. So that, that's something that uh, we all should be proud of, uh, the growth spiral that you've involved, been involved in, and I, th I thank them for the work on your behalf that has made that uh, advancement possible. So welcome to the MOS. I did spend many, many years at Murray State, and in teaching administrative roles and then president of Camelsville University. And uh, I'm, I'll tell you a quick story about, about that, uh, that movement to Camelsville. I got, I got a, a call from their board to see if I'd be interested in talking to them. And, I, and you're young and you wouldn't recognize this as a problem, but I said, no, I can't talk to you. In Kentucky, uh, we have a 30-year retirement program for educators and I only have 28 years, so I'm a captive in our retirement system at Murray State. Guess what happened within three weeks of that date? The General Assembly approved the 27-year retirement program. So I called him back and said, okay, let's talk then. 
and, and, and then I got a call from the University of Wisconsin wanting me to look at a presidency in one of their institutions at, at Stout or Menominee, Wisconsin. And I went up there and interviewed with them. And so I was interviewing with both, both groups at the same time. And as, it, as we reached the point uh, at the Wisconsin system, they, they were running a couple of weeks behind the Camelsville group. And, and so I went to campus up there and they recommended me to the chancellor's office. And, uh, and uh, as a result of that, he said, well, I want you to meet with the board of trustees on such and such a date in June. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to meet on that date. And he said, well, you'll have to. That's when the board meets. And I said, well, I, I, I cannot be. I, I have made a commitment to meet with another board on that day. I've made no commitment as to what my decision might be. But he says, that means you have to resign from one of us today. And I said, well, that's, that's an easy choice for me. It was a school about like Murray State University, a public school, and the other one at a small Baptist school. And I said, if I told you that I'd be with your board on June the 7th, I would be here to meet with your board on June the 7th. But I didn't. I told the other institution I would, and if my word is not worth anything, uh, if my word is not worth my bond, then, then I'm worth nothing uh, to, to anyone. So my, I was already committed, so I'll withdraw from you today. And, and again, you can read into that, can't you? The change, you know, some of us have to think twice and look hard to see what our Lord wants us to do. And, and many times if we, if we give it the kind of thought and prayer life that we should, it will become clear where we're supposed to be. So I'm, uh, I've tried to do that. The, the one thing that caused me to go into the Senate is they said, well, after two times I turned that down, they said, well, if you'll come, if you'll come, if you'll run, then we'll make you the Senate education chair right away, immediately upon arrival. And I thought, well, if I've worked my entire life for students, then why wouldn't I do that if we're in moderately good health? And I stayed there eight years, and, and our moderate good health on my spouse's side is not, uh, is not good now. So we've, we, had, we had to leave that role. But I'm hoping in a, in a, in a period of time I can do some things here. Uh, at least we, with your prayers and your support, maybe we, we can get some things done. Even though the board approved the, 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 the general uh, direction on Saturday that it gives me official involvement uh, with you, certainly most of you have seen me and, and my undamaged car for the last few days on campus. So it's been a busy week for us. And that, that reference to my car is I left here Saturday afternoon. You might be interested in knowing that uh, that between here and, and the cold water exit off of 80, uh, a car was trying to pass me on the left. I'm in the right-hand lane, and he's not hardly there, but he was far enough up, and I couldn't see that deer coming up out of the, out of the median. And he missed the other car, and then when I first saw him, his face was against my windshield. <laughs> and uh, so my car is wounded, you see Tom Stovesan do that little thing about that, that truck he's got for sale, It's really a clean looking truck, but it's got a few little skeeter bites back here on the side, and you saw those big dents. Well, a flock of skeeters got mine on the way home. <laughs> so we'll try to get something done about that soon. This, let me report to you. What I'm, I'm trying to do is anticipate some questions that you have in your mind, and just so, uh, if there's anything I believe in, it's being of support and service to students. My life's been devoted to that. Our future depends upon you. A great faculty and staff are necessary to develop you in the way you need to go, but you're our future, so I'm committed to, to helping. A big issue that has taken us to the point we are in now is the, the some difficulty with the uh, uh, having the reports that are in the format that the U.S. Department of Education wants regarding student financial aid. 
And uh, so the, the institution has worked hard in recent days uh, with, I think at least three reports have been given to them and, and because of a new different term to, to describe this institution as a non-term institution, which means you offer a lot of classes that are semester, but a great number of them are short term, uh, take one class at a time and, 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 and rotate through those. That's a different format and therefore the reporting is different and I suspect, uh, without knowing uh, completely, that, that that difference in the reporting style and, and, and a, a material necessary is slightly different than before. So we've had a little difficulty in, in meeting the demands that they have for, for student data uh, uh, for you. We have had a meeting in Washington already this week with uh, Congressman Ed Whitfield and, and by going to his office, he, he brought into the, the meeting the undersecretary for, for uh, education in, in the United States to, that, that's in charge of student uh, financial aid disbursement and uh, she met uh, right on the site and then we had people from the Kansas City Regional Office on the phone and a lot of people from here w was on the phone as well. I, I will tell you that uh, we're encouraged, we are extremely encouraged at, at the role that that assistant uh, secretary or the under, they call him the undersecretary of education, played in that discussion with her people in, in, uh, in Kansas City. So we feel encouraged by what's going on there. I, 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 I'm, I'm not uh, difficult, I, mean, I don't have a great difficulty being encouraged when I, when I can sense some things are going on. We did, uh, Tim Walker did leave here yesterday afternoon with the next submission of that report and drove to Kansas City. We talked to him this morning before he entered the office up there and then we talked to him just before we walked over here and he is very, uh, I think he felt encouraged about it. There's some other data that we had about 95% of the data that they needed and uh, the other will be in there in a, in a couple of days, so we'll, we'll have everything they need. And I'm optimistic that we will get some good results from their evaluation there. During my time in the Senate, I chaired the Education Committee of the Senate, and a, a, a good friend of mine chaired the Education Committee of the House of Representatives, Carl Rollins. Well, Carl Rollins has left the, the House of Representatives now to become the chief executive officer of an organization that you're probably familiar with called the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority. And uh, so I called Carl up this week and we have some, we have some things developing or going with him right now that I think will, will cause us to start receiving a, a little acceleration of, the, uh, of our funds that we have coming through the uh, Kentucky Tuition Grant Program and the CAP Program both that comes uh, basically from the lottery proceeds. Uh, I want you to know that had we been voting on the lottery to establish it today, I would have voted no on it. But certainly in that it's there, uh, a great deal of, of the resources from the lottery flows into the uh, student financial aid. The KTG program is only for, as you know, I hope you do, only for the private independent colleges in Kentucky and, and the uh, and the CAP program is a need-based program for all students in public and private uh, and church-related schools in Kentucky. So we rejoice, but I am extremely pleased with Carl and his staff working with us right now. So I'm hoping to have some, some uh, good news from them very shortly. One, one thing that, that I will try to implement in a, in a much accelerated way is, is the solicitation of private gifts and, and donations to the school. Um, and during that board meeting last week, I'll have to, you don't have to share this with the board members, so, and, and maybe the media won't either. I, I'm kidding. We, we had a, when, when I was looking at all those board members around the table, I, I made the comment to them before the meeting is over. I, I, this may surprise you, but I want to tell you this, folks we still accept contributions from the churches. And we accept contributions from trustees. 
and from other private individuals that we all know personally, then we all may, may want to co contact. And certainly, I'm asking that each of you do that. You make some contacts for us too. The private or independent and church-related schools cannot exist in the long haul unless we have private participation with us in the, in the form of, of giving. So that, that'll be the way we'll, we'll also augment and, and try to get us on, on a very stable situation. We have a, I'll have to say that I have a great deal of, of optimism about where we are right now. So we'll, we'll be moving as, as rapidly in those three areas as, as we possibly can. Uh, how many faculty and staff are in here today? Let me see. The, okay, great, 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 great. Let me, let me tell you this, that, uh, that later in this week, I will be scheduling a, a time for us to get together to talk uh, and there will be some topics there that, uh, that, that must be discussed at this point, and, and I want to do that and, and respond to your, your questions as, as you might want to, uh, to do that. And, and for the student body, we will, uh, we, we will over, I know the next few days will be hectic, a work schedule for a lot of us, but uh, in, in the near future, as soon as we can, we'll start scheduling some some town hall type meetings with the students as well on a periodic, on, on a fairly regular basis so that not only uh, can we interact with each other but I can get a greater sense of where you are and, and, uh, and the ideas that you might have that, that, that would lead us uh, down the road to, to greater prosperity in, in, in the future. Seemed like there was something else that I wanted to talk to you about, but uh, when, when they, let me, let me come back to why I decided to, to come and help you, if I can. And that is, as I have been always, and I, you heard me mention earlier, it's because of the students that are sitting in here, and it's because of all those students that are in the off-campus sites uh, around a, a multi-state area. Uh, I, I want to do everything. I don't, I don't want to leave a stone unturned uh, to make that, that happen for you. I think uh, the board, uh, the, uh, the meeting Saturday, uh, will not be the only time you see them here in the next few weeks. And I made a comment to them that uh, after they made me semi-official at least, I said, I, I want you to know that uh, it's gonna be necessary that we have you here on a, on a fairly routine uh, basis over the next few weeks because there'll be things that we'll, we'll need to do that you'll need, need, not only need to take action on, but things that we're gonna do that you must stay abreast with so that uh, everyone is talking off the same sheet of music or singing off the same sheet of music. We, can't, we have to make sure that, uh, that everything is pointed in, in a positive direction, and that direction is the greatest possible support in education that we can provide for those of you at uh, enrolled at Mid-Continent University. Um, you'd be surprised how many, even at church yesterday, how many people stopped me to say, we thank you for your willingness to become involved to try to make sure that our mid-continent uh, stays healthy and, and prospers in the years ahead. Uh, I'm, and I, one of my last night was said, I know, I, I know, and he identified a young lady that was my secretary when I was a dean at Murray a long, long time ago, who uh, got an associate degree back then, and because of mid-continents, uh, Advantage program has now completed her baccalaureate. Extremely happy about it and, and proud of her involvement. So I want you all to be proud. I want you all to be successful. And I'm committing to you to do, in my short term as a, as a, a, a acting president, to do what I can to make your future and the school's future uh, uh, prosperous. I don't have, uh, 
that, that's about all I wanted to have, I wanted to share with you. Uh, you know, we don't have much time for a great number of questions, but if, if there is a question, I might, I would try to entertain one. Well, you won't be unhappy then if I let you go a little early then, right? I, I'm, I'm pleased to be with you. Go ahead. Come to, yeah. I just had a couple of questions. Um, I just feel like nobody has been honest with us about this whole situation and what's been going on. So uh, I just wrote down a couple of questions. I had one for Tom Butler. Um, I was just curious why your number is different from Gail Hawkins' number. I, I, um, you understand? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear no, that. I didn't, I didn't understand either. Yeah. On, the, on the news, you know, reported that you thought that we had $8 million coming back. He thought that we only had $100,000 left. So I'm just wondering what the difference is in the numbers since I know Booking are very smart businesses. <laughs> in, in, in fact, not, not superseding my board chairman, but, but you know, looking at the data we have, you, you have received no, no financial aid reimbursement to the school for, for four or five months, and there are dollars in the equivalent of multi-million dollars uh, up in the range that, that you're talking about that, uh, that Dr. Butler mentioned uh, earlier to the media. And uh, I don't know how that might be misinterpreted, but that fund is there and that fund will be uh, released to us on, on a regular schedule as soon as we have the right kind of data with them to make sure that that's clear. So that, that, that is the true story on that one. But let me say this, to the best of my ability to understand the truth, that's the word that you always get. Go ahead, your second question. I was just wondering, like you're saying, uh, we'll make it to the end of the semester and our credits will carry over. Is there any way we can get that in writing? Well, in, in fact, again, I'm just get the get the microphone for, and, and ask that question. I didn't hear it. They're saying that we'll last to the end of the semester and our credits will carry over. Is there any way we can get that in writing as students? You're saying that will last to the end of the semester, so all our credits will be there, or you're saying that we will last, so is there any way we can get in writing that we will have our credits to the end of the semester? In fact, we have every expectation that we're going to have a graduation ceremony and a completion of a semester. You know, you know there are things that could happen that will not allow that to occur but our, our plans were working in a direction to make, make that true. And, uh, and, and the, the issue is, do we all want to work as a team to make this happen or do we want to start scattering to the four winds and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that, that we provide you what, what you expected to receive when you came in. We, we're going to be moving forward. This question is, if um, it's not that big of a deal, then why are we talking about selling assets and property and stuff to cover what we don't have? I'm, I'm not, I didn't understand it yet. The news is reporting that we have, that we're possibly going to sell any of our cars and assets for big time to cover what we need. So if we're doing that, then how bad is the situation? Well, if we got no more money from uh, the U.S. Office of Education or the Kentucky uh, Higher Education Assistance Authority, it's in dire straits. It's in dire straits. And, and, and without private giving uh, to supplement that, you know, it's going to take a harder task for us. But uh, as I pointed out after, I, I think Paula talked in detail to the people in, in the Higher Education Assistance Authority. So I, I'm confident that we, yeah, you, you, wanna, you wanna respond to it? Yeah. Go to the microphone, Paul, if you will. I guess I want us to explain. I think the non-communication probably has made questions and concerns. 
And I would understand that as not only a staff member, but I would also understand that as a student. I think what we have to remember is we have our first submission, and it is a small submission. Because we're not only in the program review situation, we're also in the cash management situation. So what that means is, is not only will they are looking at our cash management stuff, but the program review is seeing are we doing the things that we were caught at or found during the program review. And those stuff has been going on going. We still have some, what we call, what I call, the sins of the past because of students who are still in that maybe started way back and because of the way things were processed, where the school understood it could be, thought that that's the way it should be, but found that it wasn't the way to be processed, we're still cleaning up some of that stuff. So we're still having to put everything out there for them to see. This first submission is the most important one, because if we can get past this, that's why we've been working many, many hours to make sure that we brought someone in that has a lot of experience to it, auditing of what they look for, and so we have worked diligently to give them even more, Department of Education even more than what they would normally ask for. Because unfortunately for us, they're not only looking at what we're asking for reimbursement for now, they're going back and looking at the student from the way, the time that they first came in until the date that we dispersed the funds that we're asking for. And so now that we understand that they're going to be looking at that, not only what we're asking for, but what we're what happened with that student from the past, we have to go back and make sure we have everything in place before we go ask. So this first submission is a small submission, but if we can get this stay up with your approval and we get that money coming in, the second one's gonna be a whole lot easier. And it's the bigger one. It's the one where it's about $7 million that this student, this school will have coming in. And that's what they're talking about the money is that if we can get this first one, then we're, we're already working on the second one already because we already know what they're going to look at. We already know what they're going to ask from us. And we're making sure that everything, every T is crossed and every I is dotted, and we're giving them way whatever they need to see to understand our process. I think we also have to keep in mind that this is, our school is a non-term school. We are probably the first student, first school that's actually probably got not only had a program review going on, but now we're in heightened cash management, the highest level you can be. And so even the people that are reviewing our stuff, we've had many phone conference calls with them trying to help them understand what is our process. When our student comes here, we make it very accessible. And so what that means is that every single parent that's out there trying to make a better life for themselves, that they also have a life. And we're trying to make their life and school work together. And so we have to help have them help us understand, we have to help them understand what we do to make that happen. And I think now they're starting to get the picture. We're trying to give them everything so they can walk the student through what happened from the time they started to the time we paid them. And they're now understanding our process. So the next one is going to be a whole lot more easier. But, you know, as we all know, that first one of anything that you try to do first and you don't really know everything and what's going to happen is going to be a total, like, there, it's going to be a difficult time. And we've had a difficult time. Um, but now we understand what we have to do. We understand some processes that we have to change. Admitting, registering, enrolling, financial aid processing, advising, everything. We have been working hard to get what is exactly what we need, what do we need to do, what do we need to stop doing, and change up to make sure that we don't have this issue ever again. And, you know, I, I would, I'm always thinking, you know, hey, I've been in financial aid for 30 years, and we may be setting a precedence for any schools in the future, because there are a lot of schools that are starting this whole online, making, making education more accessible to students and starting some programs and trying to branch out. Even big schools are struggling right now, and they're trying to find ways to accommodate to bring more students in. So if anything, we can take honor of the fact that once we get past this, and we are back on our feet again, and we have a structured foundation, we could probably be advisors to other, other schools and say, hey, you're in this situation, let me tell you what not to do and tell you what you can do to help you get this through the process faster. Financial aid is 
a very difficult complex program as it, at its own when you're just a regular term school. When you put the non-term mix in it, it's a very complicated thing. And even more complicated you get if you have processes and systems that don't always talk. Every school has different systems. We have two we have two systems that are that are unique that a lot of schools don't use. And we're working on how making that work better for us to give us more accessible reports to tell us what's going on, that we can find discrepancies proactively and not after the fact. So I, I, I encourage you not to be so negative and think negative that we're really working very hard. The school has really put a lot of time and effort into making the continent what it's supposed to be, the mission that it is. I've been here for like 17 months. And I remember when I interviewed, I came into the gates of this university and I felt at home. I felt like God had a purpose for me. And that whole day I met some very, very, very special people that are strong Christians and they really showed that this school not only is just an educational school, but it's also a school that brings Christ to the students and gives them hope and for change in their life. So I hope that all that's happened in the last few months, that we can put that aside and say, you know what? God has brought us this, this, to this point because he wants us to remember our mission and remember what it's all about. And I hope that we all work together. I've seen some very dedicated staff in every department of this school, and I've always been impressed. And I can tell you, to be honest, there have been times that I've really struggled and thinking, okay, God, I have no idea why you brought me here. And, but you know what? I'll see a little glimpse of hope, a little glimpse of sunshine, because God that tells me that there, there is a reason we're all here. And I hope you as students realize how much time and effort the staff has been putting in these last few months to make this, to still be a, a university in the future. And I hope that all of you, I know that you're struggling with questions and answers and, under, and hard to understand, because sometimes it is for us staff too. But I hope that you realize that God has you here as for a purpose, just like he has us here. So, that's all I have to say. <laughs> we have, of course, uh, the, the news media here with us. And there may be some of you who are students who don't know who Paula is. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, to go back to the microphone, identify yourself, explain why you were asked to stand up there so that they can write your name down and spell it correctly. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of ENs in it, let me tell you. Um, I'm the Executive Director of Financial Aid. I'm Paula Clendenin, C-L-E-N-D-E-N-E-N. -E -E um, I was at SIU Carbondale, Illinois for 30 years in an associate director position, um, retired from Illinois, and was blessed to have an offer to come here to this school. And um, plan on staying, hopefully they'll keep me. <laughs> um, but um, when I started, there was a lot of things that had to be changed. And it's been a slow process, but we're making a lot of good progress. And I just, you know, I encourage my staff every day that, you know, when they're, they're struggling too, but they're working very hard and we're really trying to um, make you proud of us, all of our staff at this school. And uh, I think that I would commend any of the departments that are at this school that um, have worked very hard in a very difficult situation. It would be easy to walk for all of us to walk off sometimes with a situation, but it's, sometimes it's been scary. But um, that shows the dedication of this university. Probably the reason we were having difficulty understanding is that from that microphone there's a reverberation going on in here that makes it kind of tough to, to understand. Up here, I don't know whether it is back there or not, but, uh, but that was the reason we were having no trouble hearing from you. Okay, well, I appreciate you doing that, and others of you will. Yeah. We'll be having some more sessions to keep you abreast of what, what's happening. Um, please don't, 
believe, you know, I, I'm going to give you the best factual information I have, and, and the, the multi-million dollar pool of money is being held in reserve for us at the U.S. Office of Education. So to say that's not there is not an accurate statement, and we will, uh, we've, we have been encouraged every event we've had with them, including the discussion with Tim Walker a few moments ago about the, the cooperative and the desire uh, on the part of, of the staff there to help us uh, at this point in, in our, in our uh, existence. So we, we all, I think I can tell you, share uh, some degree of optimism about, uh, about our future. And I want you to know that I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to uh, have been involved at this point. A lot of things that I don't know about you yet, but I'm going to try hard over the next few days to make sure I, I get beyond that. I thank you all very much for your time today, and I'll uh, turn it back over to Tom. Thank you. Paula said something that was very important to me, is that we're a Christian school. There is a spiritual dimension to what we do here. And uh, over the weekend, as the uh, trustees were meeting, a group of pastors were standing on the the circle down here, having prayer walk. Um, let me encourage you to do the same as you feel led to do so. Um, we need for you to pray for us. Um, I had a former pastor who said, I need the prayers, you need the practice. <laughs> so those of you who are led to do so, Please spend as much time as you have available and are want to spend praying to God, asking for his mercy, for guidance for those who are charged with uh, doing what we're doing here, and uh, pray, pray, pray. Uh, God is in control. How it comes out, how it comes, how all this comes out is in his hands. Now he is... Uh, we have people who are working. We have human effort that's going on, intense human effort. And I hope someday that those folks who have spent all of this time in the past week will, will be recognized in some way because they have worked hard and long hours. But still in all, when it all comes down to it, we are in God's hands. And I am committed to be in God's hands. And whatever he wants is what's going to be done. But God also told us to ask. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Is any, uh, Dr. Wilson, you have anything else that you want to? All right. So let's put that into practice. Will you rise? And let's all pray together. <clears throat> Father, you don't even, we don't even have to tell you what we need. And we don't have to tell you what we want, and we don't have to ask for what we need, because you already know those things. But Father, you have told us that we should. And so we do that again today. We join as one heart and one body in this room. We are asking for mercy. We are asking for guidance. We pray for an anointing of Dr. Winters and those whom he will depend upon with wisdom and understanding. Father, we pray that you will open doors. It seems like that many of those doors have just sort of been shut to us today. And we, Father, we pray that, that you will open them, that you will soften hearts, and that you will uh, go ahead of us as we seek to do your will, and Father, as we seek to keep this light going on the campus at Mid-Continent University and for all the lives that have been affected by this, by this school, and who have devoted themselves to this school, and who have come to know Christ because of this school. Father, we praise your name for your goodness and your mercy. We plead for it today, thanking you for every blessing in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, folks.